I'm joined now by mixed media artist Lisa Gardner. Lisa, thank you so much for coming out thank today. <laughs> I love your work, especially your watercolors, but I want to talk about kind of the journey uh, mm -hmm. that you have taken as an artist. When did you fall in love with art? Uh, I've always carried a, a sketchbook or a book around with me when I was little. I'd carry it around and draw pictures of people and families and things. And I used to write and illustrate my own story. So I've done art for my entire life. Did you always feel like it came easily to you? Yeah, I really did. Um, I would pick up different mediums pretty easily and uh, just, uh, it, I enjoyed it so much that that made it a lot easier, I think. So how did you uh, sort of continue on the path after childhood? Did you study it in school? Did you, mm. uh, are you self-taught? What was that like? Yeah, I studied it in school. I remember I took Saturday morning uh, art lessons when the art Fort Wayne School of Art was downtown. Mm -hmm. So I so I took some lessons too, but I always did it in school. And then in high school, I took all of the art classes that Leo offered and um, then decided to go on and study that in college as well. What medium is your favorite? That's a tough question. Uh, I've always loved watercolors. Um, as a kid, we would always get a little palette of watercolor paints in our Christmas stocking, so I've been doing that my whole life, too. But but I there's so many different mediums, and I think that's why I, I dabble in a lot of, of, of different ones. I like the pen and ink drawings, and I do photography and sculpture, and there's just so many options out there. Have you always done a, a myriad of of mediums? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look back at my art from high school and college and I did a lot of collages and different mixed medias and, and, and I didn't really focus on one particular area. I took several sculpture courses and drawing and just uh, whatever was available to me. Do you think that studying several different types of art uh, sort of influenced each different type of media? Yeah, probably to an extent, and and I like incorporating different ones. I like doing a pen and ink drawing and then adding the watercolor to it, or vice versa. I'll do a watercolor and then find areas to put in the pen and ink. So yeah, I think to an extent they probably do. Tell me about your inspirations. What gets you going? It's kind of interesting. I, I call myself an information junkie. <laughs> I love doing research. That's probably, research and reading is probably my very favorite thing to do. And then uh, I want to be able to share that in some way, and I share it kind of through my art. So my art is influenced a lot on what I'm researching and, and what's interesting to me at the moment. I've always been interested in anthropology and archaeology. My The first job I wanted to have was as an archaeologist as a kid. So I even studied that as a child and then, then decided to go the art route, but it's still been a big influence to me. So uh, I like reading about ancient history. I've been reading about the Paleolithic and the Neolithic, the Ice Age, and so I've done some art that's been kind of influenced by that. I've gone on some archaeology digs, and so I've done some art kind of based on what I've experienced through the archaeology digs. Uh, I do a lot of feminist reading, and that also influences a lot of my pieces of art. So it's really kind of what I'm interested in at the moment is reflected in the art that I'm doing. So how does the um, your feminist reading, how does it make its way into your art? Sometimes that can be a little more difficult because the uh, what's going on is so complex, so it's not, a, not real clear cut. I started off doing pen and ink drawings of female images in kind of a religious context. So at the time I was thinking what does it mean to be a female in like the Christian religion or other religions. And so I did some pen and ink drawings of females kind of based on uh, religious iconography type of thing. Um, the, the piece that I mentioned of the female artist with all the faces, that was kind of a more complex uh, idea, wanting to show the history of women as artists because women have traditionally been underrepresented in the arts. And so I wanted to show that we've had women artists from the Paleolithic all the way through to today. And so I, I use the the, fix, the pictures of the female artists, their self-portraits and things like that to create this piece of art. So that was the one way that it kind of came out. Um, in the current political climate, I've done a couple political type uh, pieces that have been more mixed media. So again, I'm taking words from what's going on in, in today's politics with images and I put it together with paint and pen and ink and 
some more of a collage type thing. When you're making a piece, do you have an expectation for how it will be received? Especially when you are incorporating that social commentary, are you hoping that people will see it and have a certain reaction? Uh, more than anything, I think I want to get a conversation started. Uh, I know uh, I lean a certain way politically, and so that's kind of what my art reflects, and I know that that other people feel differently than what that is. So I really kind of want to get a, a conversation started more than anything else, that this is how I'm seeing things from my point of view, and in the hopes that someday we'll be able to have a conversation on both sides. Is it cathartic? to create these pieces, especially in the political climate that we It is definitely, have. <laughs> definitely. And, and actually when I, I had um, not done art for a long time because I was busy raising four kids. So about 10 years ago, I started doing my art again when my kids started graduating from high school. And it was a very cathartic, it had a lot to work through. I've been a mother for all these years, so now what's life gonna look like post, you know, post school age children? And so I started doing acrylics and I used my, I did like finger painting. I didn't mm -hmm. use a brush. And so it got really in there and personal with the paint and that was very cathartic. And this still is too. I'll, I'll have thoughts and feelings and emotions in my head and it, and it does help to get it out on paper or whatever medium I'm working in. How do you think that history and all of your reading has contributed to your work. Obviously there's commentary there, but is there an aesthetic that it has presented? Um, yeah, I suppose there has been, um, especially uh, I've, as I've been studying, like I said, the Paleolithic and the Neolithic, specifically cave art and the figurines that were found. And, and so I can kind of see a progression in my art as I learn more about that and as I try to reproduce those and, and and really think about what it meant to be a person at that time period and a, and a female. I think we always think that this art was created by the males of the time and that's not necessarily true. So I, I kind of think of what it would be like to be a woman at that time period or other time periods, you know, ancient Sumer or, or whatever period I'm kind of interested in. And then I'll try to put that into art in today's context. So kind of trying to connect the ancient past to what's going on today and that it's not they were people just like we were people. Mm. So trying to connect those, I think. Do you think that there is a, a feminine sensibility that you bring to your work? If someone looked at your work versus a man's, would, would there be a difference? Uh, it, uh, some of that I think there would be. Um, I, I, because I'm, I, I try to express what I'm feeling as a white woman in America. Um, so I, I think that, that there probably is. Um, interestingly, I, I've been painting landscapes this summer. I've been painting yellow landscapes because they were just so gorgeous this summer. And then uh, at the Kikian uh, paint out at the Taste of the Arts, there was a male artist who was also painting yellow landscapes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and looking at the difference in the two, and, and it, I, I don't know if maybe you would think that that was a male artist and this was a female artist, but for me, I could, I could tell a difference that how he was viewing the landscape was different than how I was viewing it. I, I was trying to get a, a more intimate type feel with the landscape yeah. as opposed to the trees and the, you know, the field or whatever. It's mm -hmm. so interesting to consider, I mean, obviously we're all seeing the world through our own lens. So mm -hmm. then to see how it's interpreted. Mm -hmm. When you start a piece, do you have a very clear idea of how you want it to turn out, or does it sort of flow and evolve as you work? Yeah, I have kind of a, an idea, but it definitely, especially with watercolor, you're dependent kind of on the process mm -hmm. of how it's gonna flow, and the paint may just decide to do something different than what you had, had anticipated it doing. But usually my process, it, there's several steps, and so it does kind of evolve from the initial concept sketches and the, the value sketches and things, and then I'll do uh, some smaller um, just trials of color and layout to see how it goes. So it, it kind of morphs over the, over the process, just hanging on to that main, what I was trying to say, even though it may not look exactly how I thought it would. Can you tell me, uh, can you elaborate on your process? You, so do you always start with a sketch? Usually, yeah, and sometimes uh, I just want to kind of relax and, and loosen up, and so I'll just go right to the paper and start putting, putting paint on the paper. And sometimes you get some interesting effects. I like working wet on wet, 
and a couple of times I'll just start playing with color and all of a sudden there's a bird or there's a flower. Mm. So, so sometimes it happens like that. When I'm doing more of a concept piece, there are several steps that I'll do my research, of course, mm. and, and then do the, the value sketches and, and the design, the, the, um, the, just how I, how I want it to look. And then I'll, I'll do um, like a color sketch maybe on not paper that isn't as good just to kind of play with it before I want to really dive into the better paper. So um, I, I just was finishing a piece up last night that I had done all those steps to my research, the sketches, the different um, paints on the different types of paper until I finally got to the final piece. Are you ever surprised by the outcome? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, especially with the watercolor, you just have to let it kind of do what it wants to do. And, and sometimes colors will mix together differently or, or you'll get a run on the paper that you weren't expecting and that might work out pretty well. So, so yeah, there's lots of times that it's kind of, oh, wow, I didn't expect that to happen, but that's really great. <laughs> I'm sure, obviously, all of your research has taught you a great deal, but what has your art itself taught you? It's taught me to be free about what I'm thinking, um, not, to, not to be too concerned about what other people will think, I suppose, mm. that my ideas are valid and, and this is my way to, of getting my ideas out there to share them with people. Lisa, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you for bringing your voice to the art world. Thank you. I hope we talk again soon. Thank, thank you. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by the Our Foundation and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.